Hello and welcome back to another episode of Low Hanging Reviews. This is season one, episode number six. And today we have a new background, as you can see. Hopefully it's not too shiny and the texture's not throwing you off too bad. I just needed something that kind of stuck flat to the surface and didn't move around while I was trying to make these videos. And this is what I ended up with. So there's that. And on another note, we have a new system today. So instead of uh, how I usually do these things where I predetermine what I'm going to do and then I make the video based off of themes or even if it's random, I know what products I'm going to do beforehand. Today, I've picked out eight products. However, I don't know which one I'm going to be reviewing yet. And um, <laughs> we're going to be having this wheel that we're going to spin and that's going to determine what we as a group are going to be looking at. So how this whole thing works is, as I said before, I've chosen eight different items and I don't know which one I'm going to review yet. However, each of those items have a number assigned to them. Those numbers correspond to spaces on the wheel and whichever space the wheel lands on, that is what we're going to pick to review. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wheel. So here is our wheel. And um, as you can see, red, yellow, blue, black, low hanging reviews. Each uh, segment has a number and each number corresponds to a product that I have, again, previously chosen. And whatever number that that spinner lands on, this one right over here, that is the item that we're going to choose to review. And we're going to do that three times because we have, as usual, three reviews. So let's go ahead and spin for the first time. All right, for our very first spin on the wheel here, the first time in history, we're going to try to make it a good one, and hopefully, I can. A little wobbly there on that one. Number seven, it looks like it landed on, and that would be mouse pads. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you these products after the wheel is out of the way. Let's go ahead and get our second spin in. Okay, back from a frustrating jump cut, we are on spin number two. And uh, we had some technical difficulties, still working out some of the kinks on this, and um, you know, hopefully I can get this spin going without it breaking. So, let's attempt our second spin here. Pretty weak spin there, but it's okay. It looks like it's on the borderline of two and three. However, the uh, indicator looks like it's pointing to three, which would be bubble gun. So, if we get a third, uh, you know, and final spin out of this without breaking it, that would be great. So let's go ahead and do that. And here we are with what we hope would be our third and final spin. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the center of the wheel and spin it until it breaks. Oof, that was rough. And number one is the third item, which would be a USB keyboard leaf blower. Yes, you heard that correct that actually exists for little leaves that are on your keyboard. So let's go ahead and get the wheel up out of here and get the products into the shot so we can examine them. Up first is the mouse pad. And as I said, I have two of them. The first one being a PlayStation branded mouse pad. And um, you know, it doesn't really say if it's PS1, PS2, PS3, or PS4, or more. It just says PlayStation, so it's for the, you know, PlayStation fan at heart. Um, on the top, we have a really cool um, button graphic setup in blue and gradient. Very nice, very stylish, very indicative of Sony and PlayStation. Uh, on the front, it says that it's a PlayStation Icons desk mat. And um, it's officially licensed product, so, you know, it, it's probably going to have a pretty good quality to it. Anytime you see that, you know, you're in good hands. Unless, you know, 
it was a bootleg thing and they decided to just put it on there, but it does say official licensed product and it does appear to be legit. On the front, you have an image of what the mouse pad looks like, white with blue trim. It has bisected shapes of each of the buttons, one with dots and solid on the other, and there it goes. So the dimensions of this, the height and the width, is 10.2 inches in height, or 260 millimeters, and the width is 27.5 inches slash 700 millimeters. And um, it's done by a company here called Peladon. I think uh, the sides of the box, no print, and the bottom of the box is just like the top of the box, except without the PlayStation logo. On the back, we see a description of it, Icon's desk mat, and uh, obviously the PlayStation uh, mat there. Uh, apparently, just wipe it clean, and it's all good. Made in China, because of course, why not? And, um,. Let's go ahead and open this thing and see what it looks like. So let me just open it from the side here. I'll do my best not to rip this box open completely because it's pretty cool. And there it is all rolled up in there. Take it out carefully. There's the box. We'll leave it right there. And we will go ahead and get this thing laid out. So, here it is. The PlayStation mat. And, um, I have to say, overall, that's pretty awesome. That's a really nice mat. Um, that's pretty big. That's huge, actually. Uh, let me go ahead and jump cut. I'll zoom out. Okay, this is a much better view of it. So, um, as you can see, it's a white mouse pad with the uh, blue trim and blue uh, stitching around the edge. Stitching appears to be done quite well. The print is done quite well. And um, it feels high quality. It's not moving around easily when I'm uh, moving it, you know, with my hand. And um, as a test, let's go ahead and put this mouse on the pad and move it around. As you can see, you have a huge space to go ahead and do whatever you need to do for all your gaming needs, for all of your word processing needs, for whatever you need to be waving a mouse around like this for, you have the pad for it. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get a close-up look at this thing. So, right here on the bottom left corner, we see PlayStation printed there. And one thing I did just notice is that there is a little bit of staining here with the blue, but that's not that big of a, you know, big of a problem. I'm not going to complain about that. Here we have the four icons for the buttons. Very iconic, I have to say. Um, those things are, you know, ingrained in my mind. And even when I'm gaming on a PC, to this day, I still use a PlayStation controller because I love it. Anyways. As I'd mentioned previously, I have two of these things. Can you guess what the other one is? Hint, it's another game or game related thing. Video games, more particularly. As cool as the first mouse pad was, and as big of a fan as PlayStation and, you know, that memorabilia that I am, I have to say that this mouse pad is so much cooler just into the fact that it has that much more detail. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the Pac-Man desk mat. Now, right off the bat, you get the top labeled, you know, Pac-Man. Exactly like the other one where it represented what it was on the top of the box. I'm assuming it's like that on the back of the box. So, if we look at the front, that's uh, assumedly the front, and it's upside down. We have the look Pac-Man, Pac-Man desk mat. And uh, you can see it's the entire playing field, and it is awesome. You can see Pac-Man, you can see, you know, an orange fruit, four ghosts, some dots, and some power pellets, other things like that. I think this is the same dimensions as the other mat, and 
and it's by the same company, which means that the back is exactly the same, so we don't need to take a look at that. Let's go ahead and open this thing. Same process as before. Undo the top as carefully as you can or as recklessly as you need to. Take out the contents. It'll be rolled up just like this. And we can unroll the goodness and absorb the greatness that is the Pac-Man mouse pad. So now that I actually have this thing properly in frame, let's go ahead and talk about it. Um, it looks great. It's fantastic, actually. Um, on the top right-hand corner, we have the Pac-Man logo. On the bottom, we see a fruit count. On this side, we have the number of lives that Pac-Man has left, and it's getting hairy, because he only has one life left. Up there, we see the 1-up and the score, and the high score all the way at the top. We have 1, 2, 3, and 4 ghosts one Pac-Man, and a fruit, because, you know, that's what you do. Now, uh, again, I do like this one better. Uh, it's the same quality overall as the other one, as far as print goes, and as far as construction goes. The stitching on the side is black rather than blue, and the base, obviously, is black. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to keep this, because... I think I'm going to give this to somebody. So, before I do that, let's go ahead and take a closer look, shall we? So, as mentioned before, up top we have the 1-up and the score. The high score in the middle. We have the Pac-Man logo, classic. We have the fruits down at the bottom right-hand corner. And we have the life count at the bottom left-hand corner. We have one, two, three, and four ghosts with the playing field, the maze, the Pac-Man, and the fruit. How epic is this? So you can be the envy of all your coworkers at work when they pass by, and you can tell them that this is what you spend your money on. Okay, now that we're back down at a correct height, and I am not stressing my back trying to film that at an awkward angle, we're going to see what the wheel had predicted for the second spin. And that was the bubble gun. More specifically, it is a Gatling gun. And um, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. This is awesome. It is also battery operated. You'll be happy to find out. It's from a store called Daiso, which is like a Japanese dollar store. Uh, this was 200 yen, which was about $2 and some change. Now. It is a Gatling gun, sometimes referred to as a minigun, or a machine gun, or of some sort, and this is awesome. It came in two colors. This is the gray version, but there was also a blue version. And the blue version wasn't like, you know, this color blue, or like regular blue. It was like, uh, like gray blue. Like this color with a tint of blue, maybe. Um, so yeah, Gatling gun, bubble maker. Most of this is in Japanese, and some of it is in English, so that helps. It says here that you press the button to make bubbles, and it's for ages six and up. Um, uh, here's the color indicator right here. It says it is gray, and it tells you what kind of battery is to use, because that would be helpful. Here we have the little tray that it comes with. It shows you how to install batteries on the side of the box. On the back of the box is a lot of information in foreign language that I am not going to read, but if you want to go ahead and pause, the video and read it, you may. Taking a look at the other side, just more information, same as the front. On the bottom, pretty much all encompassing information. All right, to open, as usual, give it a little side action here. Open the box, just like that. And the first thing we're gonna do is pull out what appears to be, oh, already some action. That's scary. So what I'm gonna, <laughs> So what I'm going to do is, I guess, pull out everything, because that won't stop. We'll get rid of the box, as is our tradition, and we will first take a look at what's in the bag. So, when we open it, we receive, in the world's largest bag, 
a tube of bubbles. How nice of them that we don't have to make our own. So we get the tube of bubbles. We also get with the deafening sound of plastic. The bubble tray. And that is a pretty good size. We also get two attachments. Because if one was just not enough for you, you get two. First, you get this guy right here that looks straight menacing. I uh, think this is the big bubble maker, and it makes gigantic bubbles. And it looks like a crosshair at the same time. Dangerous stuff. And the alternative, the classic, you get this attachment that makes tiny bubbles. Tons of tiny bubbles. Isn't that awesome? Now, as for the gun itself, you heard it go off while it was in the box. That is a farce. There is no batteries included. I just had already put batteries in it just to test it again, just to make sure that it worked so that we didn't run into a situation where I had a video, you were hyped to see it, and it didn't turn out. So, with that being said, this is the minigun. This is impressive stuff here. Now, although it is obviously just two sides clamped together probably, um, it's very awesome. Uh, with the light shining through it, you can see that the motor is installed in this section here. There is a tiny fan that spins to provide air pressure. And um, the trigger is on the handle which you hold like this if you're left-handed, or like this, if you're right-handed, or like this, if you just don't care. So, there's also a tiny little handle so that you can reenact Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator 2 on top of the building, sweeping all the cop cars. That's crazy. All right, which, by the way, don't do. I don't think I need to tell you that, but, you know, I kind of do. So. You push the button, makes the sound, makes the fan spin. Actually, that feels good. So, the way you do this is that you take your set of bubbles here, and you open the thingy thingy up, and it has a little protective cover on the front, but that should be no big deal, just take it off. And pour said solution into the pan. Which makes me a little nervous because it did mention that this product was, in fact, made in China. Yes, sold and distributed by Daiso in Japan. However, made in China, so I don't know what's in this bottle. Lord, help us all. Okay, so. We get our gun, and we take our attachment, and you just pop it on, just like that. Oh, and by the way, if you want to put the batteries in there, you're going to need, you know, a screwdriver, a uh, Phillips screwdriver, a very tiny Phillips screwdriver. You take it out, you pop this thing in, you put three AA batteries in there, put the thing back down, screw this back on, got yourself bubble time. So, let's go ahead and test this thing out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do the test in here. Hopefully, uh, this does not permanently ruin anything in the studio. Not the background, not this, but we'll see. If it does, it does. You know, we'll have stories to tell. Um, so, what happens here is that I've already filled the bubble tray, as you may remember. I've already put my attachment on there, which happens to be the big attachment. And what we're gonna do is, Without spilling, we're going to take our gun and place it just straight down like that into the solution. We're going to let it kind of cool off there for a second. We're going to put this tray down and we're going to see what this attachment does. Hopefully, it does not disappoint. Oh, oh. So, um,. Couldn't keep it in frame, but that was a pretty big bubble. Let's go ahead and cue up another one. Let's go ahead and uh, 
switch attachments here. Okay, I've switched attachments to the classic minigun, which is going to shoot out, assumedly, a bunch of small, tiny bubbles. Now, join me as we obliterate the sky with bubbles. How awesome is that? That's crazy. Look at how many bubbles there are. That's insane. And, you know, the bubbles will probably only depend on how good the solution is. I have to think that this is pretty standard stuff, but if you had a really good bubble solution, you'd probably be able to make these things go crazy. Um, let's give that another go. Look at that. That's insane. Let's get another shot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna aim it at the camera and hopefully not mess it up. I'm making a terrible mess today. So. Here we are, and there you go. Oh, ah, gosh. I just got myself in the face. Ugh. Anyways, so that's enough of that. I uh, really don't want to stop playing with this thing, but I also don't want to make a huge mess in here like I am. So I'm going to clean this up, and we're going to take a look at another product. The third and final item that the all-knowing wheel has picked out is in fact the USB keyboard leaf blower. Yes, it exists. As said before, it is also from Daiso and USB powered and looks like the leaf blower. It came in two colors as well. It was the uh, teal kind of looking color here and a black color, which is the one I got. You plug it into any USB type port and it works just like a big leaf blower, but for small things. So, um, you know. <coughs> <coughs> Not a whole lot of information that I can get out of it uh, on the box. Uh, however, on the back, there is even more, even smaller even more foreign information, and that's something that I'm not willing to get into. So, let's go ahead and open this thing. Okay, so again, just from the top, pop that open, get these flaps out of here, eject the goods, get the box on the side, let's take a look at what we have here. A much quieter bag, I have to say. Carefully dump out all the accessories, and here you are. You have the wire, which is a USB at the end. You have the handled unit here that looks just like a leaf blower. And my mistake, this isn't black. This is clearly white. Um, anyways, so I guess the other color was white. And you get the nozzle part to make it look like said leaf blower. And what you do is kind of just lock it there. There's a little peg. Turn it, and it's good and you have yourself a little tiny leaf blower for your uh, keyboard, no less, uh, for dust and grime and stuff like that. Here's a little function button here, so when you wanna go ahead and do your things. I also suppose that um, you could use it for a bonsai tree because it is that tiny. So um, let's plug it in and see how powerful this thing is. So here we have our wonderful, beautiful pile of garbage, which happens to be a bunch of tissue just kind of crumpled up and um, torn up into pieces. And it's gonna suck because I have to clean this up myself. But wait, no I don't, because I have my mini leaf blower here that happens to be connected with USB power. And I have to say that this cord is actually quite long here. It's, it just keeps going forever. But um, I have it plugged into a computer. And um, we're gonna see how strong this thing actually is. So. Uh, it might be a little loud, I don't know. I'll try to keep it away from the microphone as best as I can, but here goes nothing. Yep, I'd say just like using the real thing. Just not as heavy, uh, no gas, it's USB powered, and it's entirely plastic. Pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and try um, a solid piece of tissue here. And that shouldn't be a problem because even if, um, you know, it's a bigger piece, it's the same weight because it's like the same amount of paper towel, right? So 
I don't know. Let's go ahead and try it. Push our button here, and let's go to work. Struggling a bit with the mass of tissue. Um, let me turn that out. So it's struggling with the mass of tissue. It doesn't really push it that hard. However, I think small particles and dust will be removed with this gadget. And the best thing is you keep it at your desk. It's kind of a novelty. It's pretty silly. Uh, you can start a conversation with it. You can travel with it because it breaks down. Um, and the best part is, uh, I think, again, I got this from Daiso, but I think I got this for $5 only. And um, it's just a pretty silly gadget. I just think it's funny. So. Thank you, Almighty Will, for giving and giving the gift that keeps on giving. With that being said, let's cap this off and let's try to get out of here. So by using the magic of the wheel, we ended up with these three products plus the one bonus item being the other mouse pad. I will say that um, out of all of these, I do like them all. Um, the one I do like the most is probably this bubble gun here because it's so, you know, it's so unique. It's very, um, I've never seen a battery operated gun look like this, like this detailed with the little, you know, handle and everything. And for $5 with, you know, the another big bubble attacher, um, this bubble tray and a jar of bubbles, I don't think you can go wrong. Again, I got that from Daiso, which is a, you know, Japanese like dollar store or discount kind of stuff. Uh, they have good products. I also got this little USB keyboard leaf blower thing um, at Daiso for $5 as well. It's more of a like gag type thing or a joke type thing to have on your desk. It doesn't really do a whole lot. It is pretty powerful, but I don't know how effective it would be. I would probably use, you know, that spray can of air or whatever instead. Um, going back to these mouse pads though, I can really enjoy these. I think that they're high quality, the print on them is very good, the stitching is very good, they don't move around a whole lot, they're, you know, they have weight to them, and I got those two at Five Below. And, um, you know, we're finding some pretty good stuff there at that store, so here's another example of that. Don't forget as well to check out LHR Minis, which are the shorter episodes and versions of these ones, which will be coming out every Tuesday as, uh, you know, we've moved regular LHR to Fridays instead of Thursdays, just because it's easier on me. So with all that being said, and you know, these lawn mowers and everything going on in the background, this has been another LHR Low Hanging Reviews episode. And until next time, have a great day. Michael Scott, I am a boss, not going to work. I'm